Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at you. And today I'm going to build a really, really simple tutorial on how you can use a switching hands mechanism, kind of like you see in Top Rush. So instead of me explaining, let me just show you in this SteamVR example scene. So let me see if the controller's track. All right, so basically right here, I can throw blue cubes in my left hand and red cubes in my right hand. And just like in Top Rush, if I hit my controllers together, then they'll switch. So now throwing red cubes from my left hand, blue cubes from my right hand. You can switch again, just like that. So this doesn't take that much, and it's still a super valuable thing to build into most games you build. So let's just kind of go ahead and dive into how you can actually build this. All right, so getting started right away, I'm just going to go ahead, open up Unity, create a new project. Let's just call this switch and video. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that on the desktop. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and use just purely Steam VR. That's the only thing we're going to have to import. So it should be a really quick to get that in here. Just go into the asset store, get that. And hopefully they keep these the extras folder, which is what we're going to be using in here. They might get rid of it in the future. We'll see. But as long as it's part of the GitHub, I think it'll be safe. So just go ahead, accept all the build settings, that's fine. And the, the scene we're going to be using is the test throw one. So this is just a really basic one where there is this template thing, which is this like cube square looking thing. And it copies that and you basically throw it with your left and right hand. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to duplicate this actually so we can distinguish between left and right hand. And I'm just going to move this here. And we'll go ahead and create a materials folder just so that we can create two materials. One, one that's red and one that's blue. So go here, create material, let's call this one red. Create material, call this one blue. And then let's also just make them blue and red. That one's blue and this one's red, perfect. So let's call this one red and just assign the red material to it. And then same deal here to make this one blue. So boom, boom, perfect. So once we have that, next thing we want to do is create our Vive Manager script. So I'm going to create a C sharp script, call this Vive Manager. And basically what the Vive Manager is going to do is basically maintain a reference of our left hand controller and right hand controller. And with that, we can also just, they'll just be kind of like variables, and we can just swap them willy-nilly when, whenever we want. And that's going to create that effect of actually like switching the hand controllers. Let's call this left hand, and go ahead, copy that line, and make it right hand. And we'll also, we're making this a singleton, so... Public static five manager instance, and we'll say this is void awake. So singletons are a your best friend in Unity because they're they're basically the best way of probably exchanging data. So and like if you're coming from another programming background, jumping into Unity, I think this is a really important topic to, to kind of understand. It's not terribly complicated, but I think it's, of all the ways I've seen to pass data around Unity, this is probably the best one. So once we have that, that basically allows us to say that there's only going to be one Vive Manager in the scene and we can access it statically. And then I'm just going to add in a switch hands method here. And just like any switch hand property, we're just going to go ahead and save it into a temporary variable, then assign the left hand, or assign the right hand to left hand, and then assign the right hand to our temp. And at that point, we're pretty much done with these hand controllers. So whenever we call switch hands, it's just going to switch the references, and any actions we want to do with the left hand will actually happen on, the, on what the viewer sees as the right hand. Um, 
And at that point, let's just go ahead, go into Steam VR Extras, and then whip open the test throw, which is basically what is used to actually control the test throw. And actually, before that, I do that, I just realized that there is a bug that I want to fix within this scene. And so actually, the model is offset by this arbitrary number. And so I'm just going to go ahead and apply that change to fix it. And what the effect that ends up happening is it rotates around your hand as opposed to actually moving exactly where your hand is. And it feels weird. So if you want to fix that, just go ahead and reset that value back to zero. And so what test, so if we actually look at the test throw script on the inspector, we'll see there's a prefab, which is this red thing. And actually, we can go ahead here really quickly and assign the blue to the right hand. And so what that does is it copies the red object and it throws it. And then we also specify the attach point, which is a part of the controller. And we're actually going to want to switch that as well. So while we're here, might as well copy this rigid body and paste that in here and call this the left attach point and then make one for the right touch point. And so basically what you want to do is anything related to controllers, you're going to want to dump into the singleton. And then the singleton will basically manage that reference, which is really nice. So again, go ahead, go ahead copy paste that, and we'll call this temp attach. And so this is just going to be left attach point, left attach point, right attach point, right attach point and then temp attach. So that's just going to go ahead and switch the attach point references for us whenever we call switch hands, which we'll do a bit later. And so once we have that, we can actually just go ahead, comment out our attach point, comment out our tracked object, and get rid of awake. And we need to create references as local variables instead, just so that there's something for the code to actually reference because we just wiped a bunch of references in the fixed update method. So we can actually just go ahead and copy this. And now we need to basically figure out which one is left and which one is right. So for that, just go here, create a boolean for is left. So this is something we can mark in the inspector. Actually, I need to make it public to do that. So let me do that. Okay, and so we just mark which one is left, which one is right in the inspector. And then we say attach point equals vive manager dot instance dot left attach point. And we can copy this for the hand. So now this is tracked object is now your left hand. And then we say else here. And then just copy these lines and do it for the right attach point and right hand. All right. So at that point, pretty much done with the code. We've done our fixed update here, and we've done the switching. The only thing actually we have left to do is actually call switch hands. And so for that, let's actually kind of hop back into the inspector here. And for that, we basically need to add some colliders to our controllers. So I have here a box collider, and I actually off screen, I have the values I used from testing. So I'm just going to quickly type those in. So negative, negative 1.5, whoops, negative on there, negative and 0 0.05, 0 0.25. And the last one is 0, 0.5. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this onto the right hand. And also just mark this as is left. And mark this as a trigger. So you only want one as a trigger because otherwise it, they don't recognize each other because two triggers are not allowed to collide with each other. And then we're just going to add a rigid body so that we get the on trigger enter event fire, firing within the code. I'll also make sure it's kinematic and not using gravity. So once we do that, let's just hop back into our code, go to the bottom here and do void on trigger enter. Let's call vive manager.instance.switch hands. 
And if we did this just by itself, what would happen is the on trigger and trig actually gets called on the left and right hand. So it gets called twice every time you bump your controllers together. And so that actually negates everything that happens. So we're actually only going to want to call this once. And we're just going to quickly put that in by just checking if we are the left controller. So only the left controller can switch it. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it there. We've done our references here. And we just check if is left and then switch it. And then otherwise our references get switched in the Vive Manager. The only thing actually we need to do is create an empty game object and drag our Vive Manager onto here and set it up. So left goes there, right goes there, and this is on our model under tip. So we just go, this is our left one, we put it there, and same deal for the right one. Just, oops, we already lost it. We go back to game object and then just drag this here. All right, so I just quickly check, so left, right, left, right. Cool. So at this point, also just to quickly check, um, yep, left is marked as left and right is not. So let's go ahead and test this out. Headset on and grab our controllers here. Oops. All right, so this one spawns our blue ones. This one spawns our red ones, so you can throw. And now this one spawns the red, and this one spawns the blue. And back and forth. So basically a really nice way to, instead of having the user manually switch their hands, you can just have them just do a little bunk. And if you want it, you can even add in a particle effect that happens, like that I think would be cool. That's what Tiltbrush does. And you get that effect. So hopefully this is kind of useful if you're building your own game and want to cater to a left-handed audience because i know on the subreddit that there are a lot of people who have kind of complain that like we <laughs> we right-handed devs are not actually treating the left-handed people right so really nice way to do that and hope this is useful um i definitely want more people to incorporate like this mechanic i think it's one of the best mechanics i've seen in Tilt by far as far as like that easy switching and it just also feels good and you get that nice tactile feedback. So let me know if that was useful. And that's it for this week. And hope you guys enjoyed. You can follow us on social media or subscribe to the YouTube channel. But other than that, this has been Fuseman. And I'm signing out.